I wanted to make a video on computing the Fibonacci sequence. There's lots of information on the sequence itself, but suppose you wanted to compute it, to calculate it on a computer. How would you go about doing that? And I'm going to go over three different algorithms that have very different computational complexities and very different costs for computing it. And to, to show out, to, to demonstrate that the choices you make when you implement an algorithm really matter. So let's start with the definition of the Fibonacci sequence. Say f sub 0 is 0, f sub 1 is 1. That's how you start it. And then the way you get the next term is by adding the two previous terms. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, uh, 3 plus 5 is 8, whatever, and so on and so on. You just add the two previous numbers to get the next number. So there's this really cool thing in mathematics called the generating function, which is the function you get when you use the coefficients of the, of the sequence as the coefficients of a polynomial. So f sub 0 plus f1 times x to the 1 plus f2 times x squared plus f3 times x cubed. So we construct an infinite polynomial whose coefficients are from the sequence. So if you do that for the Fibonacci sequence, so anyways, blah, 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 long story short, we can get a non-recursive definition for the Fibonacci sequence. So it's 1 over the square root of 5 times the golden ratio to the n times the negative of the reciprocal of the golden ratio to the n. So like if you look at this definition, it's not even clear that this is an integer because you have all these crazy powers of the golden ratio. But anyways, we're going to use this uh, formula in, in one of our ways of programming the Fibonacci sequence. Here are the three implementations of the Fibonacci sequence I want to compare. So Fib1 is the standard recursive definition. If n is 0, return 0. If n is 1, return 1. Otherwise, make the recursive calls. It's a fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. <clears throat> Standard, uh, just by the following the definition of the Fibonacci sequence. This one, fib 2, we're going to construct an array and work our way up. So if n is 0, we, we handle the base cases the same way. And now we're going to construct an array. So this means we have an array of length n plus 1 copies of 0. So in particular, f0 is 0, f1 is 1. And now we work our way up, going from 2 to n. We just define f sub i to be the sum of the two previous terms, and we're working our way up. And then we return the last element, which is the one we're looking for. And we're going to compare that with um, fib3. Here's a third implementation, where phi is the golden ratio, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And then we're just taking the golden ratio to the nth power. This double star means to the nth power, dividing that by the square root of 2, and then rounding it to the nearest integer. So there's three completely different implementations. Now I'm going to run them in Python, and we're going to compare their speed. OK, I'm going to print out the first 50th terms for i in range 1 to 50. Print out. So here we're testing fib3. The, um, the thing where we have an explicit formula for the nth term. Copy, go into here, paste, paste, and it runs pretty fast. Get these large numbers. Now let's try fib2. Copy, go into here, paste, runs pretty fast. Now let's try fib1. Fib1 is the recursive, de the standard recursive definition. So let's paste that one in there. Paste. And look what's happening. It's really, really slow and is getting slower. Fib 34, Fib 35 is really, really slow. So let's see what's going on here. If we look at this, let me um, refocus this down here and move the computer. So the computer is still calculating. We'll check in on the computer. But let me just set this up here. So Fib 1. Look at what this thing's doing. It's making, uh, it's doing some constant amount of work, then it's making these two recursive calls. So if we let C be the computational cost of this thing, the computational cost, we can hear the fan of the computer turn on, the computational cost at um, level N is equal to, we're making two, re two recursive calls, 
say this is the cost now, plus some sort of constant work, like adding them together and doing if statements or whatever. So this is the cost to compute the nth term. So notice that this is greater than or equal to f sub n. So this thing is exponentially hard. We know the nth Fibonacci number is approximately um, the golden ratio to the nth power. So we, we're, we're saying this thing is exponentially difficult. So if we look back up at the computer, the heck is it on? And, and you can hear the fan on. It's only on um, fib sub 40, and it's still working away. And it's got it's getting harder and harder. So it's exponentially hard. So that one is is not very computationally efficient. So now if we go to this next array version, this one is just uh, constructing an array of length n and then filling filling it in of length n. So its computational complexity is just proportional to however the nth number we asked for. So this one, so the, the first one, let's just write it down. We know it's going to be something, something exponential. We don't know what the base is, but it's exponential. And now Fib3, all we're doing is just some arithmetic. So this one has computational cost of 1, just some constant number of arithmetic. So it doesn't get more and more expensive as we ask for larger and larger Fibonacci sequences, larger and larger terms. So we have three completely different implementations. The first ex implementation is exponentially uh, is exponential cost in terms of the nth Fibonacci number. This one's linear in terms of the nth Fibonacci number, and this one's constant. So three completely different computational costs. Notice if if we were asked for the first n terms, not just the nth term, this term is pretty good. But you wouldn't want to call it like n times. You'd want to just start from the bottom and work your way up. And it looks like it, it, it the computer's still chugging along. It got to fib sub 40. Oh, there just comes 42, and the fan's on. It's going crazy, and each one is getting harder and harder, so I'm not going to wait for this thing to finish. Um, if you want, you can stare at this for the last 20 seconds of the video, but I don't think we're going to get another number in the last 20 seconds. exponentially hard, the naive implementation. It, it's because it's redoing a lot of work. It just keeps redoing, redoing work over and over and over again instead of just doing that work once. And I'm not going to wait around here for that to finish. Thank you very much.